What's going on everyone? Austin John Plays here and today I'm going to be going over some helpful tips and tricks for you to hunt some of the more difficult Pokemon like Roaring Moon and Slitherwing in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. You're going to see on screen I have a shiny Roaring Moon. This is my third. I've tested this. This works. I've heard of people having so much difficulty trying to get shiny Roaring Moon and I can tell you exactly what you're doing wrong. In order to get hard Pokemon like Roaring Moon to show up, you have to do the opposite of what you always do. Let me just go ahead and catch this real quick. I also finally got all of the shiny Tatsugiri and I am working on all of my isolating encounters part two video. Whether you decide to come down here with a dark type, are you kidding me? <laughs> okay, now I have four Roaring Moon. Whether you decide to come down here with a dark type sandwich for encounter and sparkling, or if you decide to come down here with a flying type, Roaring Moon and also Zyvalius are very easy for you to get shiny. Nice. Critical captures are so much easier in this game. I'm so thankful for that. Typically, whenever you're doing any sort of shiny hunt or isolating encounter, the number one thing in your head is you want to run around fast, you want to despawn in a bunch of Pokemon, you want to respawn in a bunch of Pokemon. The only problem is when you're doing some select areas and there's going to be pack spawns all over the place, like this Houndstone and these Gabite over here, you're not going to have a lot of room for your non-pack spawns to show up. If I were to just keep running around in a circle like this, staring in at the middle, which is what I did before, I now have two Houndstone pack spawns, and they're so annoying because these Gravards, they're just this tiny little flame. You could run into them. You have to constantly pan your camera around, look at what's going on around you, use L to resume and retarget in different directions. But there is something you're doing fundamentally wrong. These Pokemon, like Houndstone and Gabite, are always going to be pack spawns in this area. That means that they require enough spaces for them and two additional Pokemon to spawn in. Now, because these are ruins, that's the reason that Houndstone is showing up. And because you're underground, that's the reason that you have Roaring Moon, Zyvelius, and everyone else showing up. The important thing to realize is you have a total of 15 Pokemon that could be on your screen at any time. If you slowly start despawning them away by your despawn perimeter, that's when you're gonna be able to control how many Pokemon are gonna be on your screen at one time. Right now there are 15 Pokemon here. And while I'm looking over there, I see that I have that Zyvelius in the back. If I just move a little bit down, he's gone and allows another Pokemon to spawn in. As you're going through, the number one thing you wanna do is go slow. And you want to slowly despawn Pokemon one or two at a time. If you despawn three Pokemon at a time, then you're gonna be at the point that you're going to get the pack spawns coming back and they're going to just be filling up your pool as much as possible. Doing this and then also avoiding the water so you don't get the gold ducks and the Vaporeons to spawn in, you just slowly walk in one direction. Now I do recommend panning back and looking at where you're despawning them because the Pokemon can spawn where you're actively despawning Pokemon. Don't get anxious and just start running all over the place. Slow and steady is gonna win the race for you on this one. Doing this is going to get you the most amount of spawns per minute of this specific Pokemon. If you were to run around in a circle, you're gonna get less Roaring Moon spawns per minute. Even though it seems like you're going slower and you are actually physically going slower, this is better for your overall amount of spawns per minute. That's what it's about for Pokemon like this that cannot be in pack spawns. Now, if you're playing Pokemon Violet, this will also work for Iron Valiant as well. While you're down here, again, because these are ruins, you are gonna be getting the Houndstone showing up, although they're not nearly as intrusive. It's not really that big of an issue because like, I'm just casually driving around and I'm not having that much of an issue getting a room full of Iron Valiant to show up. Not nearly as difficult as Roaring Moon is. If I'm going to be too close to the grass, I'm gonna be getting all the Palmo and Palmy showing up. And then if I'm going to be in the middle by the ruins, that's where I'm getting Houndstone showing up. And there we go, got one. 
So something that you may want to do if you are going for Iron Valiant is don't boost. Instead, just slowly drive around with your camera facing where you've been and then pan back and forth. That way you can see, hey, did I accidentally spawn one behind me? Chop out one to two at a time. Try to avoid getting three or more because that's when you get the Houndstone spawning in. Contrarily, if you decide to start boosting all over the place, you are going to be getting them constantly spawning in and out, but you are going to be getting your pack spawns of Houndstone showing up. And I don't know, see, Houndstone showing up. I don't know if your amount of spawns per minute would be better if you decided to boost all over the place. Instead, don't boost, slowly just trim away from where you're not seeing them. If you are in a situation that you're seeing just Houndstone all over the place, crop those out and then head right back to the middle. If you only chop away one or two at a time, you're gonna completely prevent them from spawning in. In addition, if you wanted to double down and this is even more effective in Scarlet, throw out your Let's Go Mon and your Let's Go Mon is gonna be able to trim away the ones that are close to you while you're trimming away the ones that are far away from you. I have a better example of that upcoming in just a little bit here. I wanna see if I can get another one in this same sandwich. I have three minutes left on my sandwich. Just got another one to show up. Oh, you're gonna make a nice thumbnail. Thank you. I actually started recording this video because I'm in the middle of my isolating encounter video and I realized that I was spending like five minutes talking about this strategy. So I figured I should just put out this strategy now so you're familiar with it. That way it's better for you. So you could either do a bug or a fighting for this. Fighting is actually gonna be a little bit easier. And in order to do this method for Pokemon like Slitherwing, I'm just gonna jump into area zero, which is gonna spawn you at the very beginning. Like remember where you were in the story? It's gonna drop you off here next to these, what, six buildings? In this area, there are no spawners. And if you're far enough away from everyone, there's gonna be nothing spawning here. But as soon as you start going past these trees, that's when you're going to start spawning in all of your Slither Wings, all of your Palmo line, and all of your Metacham line. But we run into the same issue, that these Palmo and, oh, there, yep, there's Metacham in the back, are going to be pack spawns, and the Slither Wing are not. So, all you want to do is throw out your Let's Go Mon. And as you're doing this, you're going to notice that you're spawning in one Pokemon at a time, the Slither Wing. And, to make this even faster, all you need to do is just slowly walk toward those six buildings. So now, I'm trimming away them from the back, and he's trimming away them from the front. And when I see that they're spawning off here in the corner, I then walk away from them, and I despawn those two Pokemon one at a time. You just want to focus on where the largest cluster of them is. If it's close to you, you throw out your Let's Go Mon, and then you are going to slowly trim away at the Pokemon that are spawning there. And the slower you do this, the more accurately you're going to be despawning them. The last thing you want to do is not only despawn your strawberries, but despawn your apricots. Because the shiny one looks like an apricot and these look like strawberries. Look, there are 15 Slitherwings on my screen right now. This works. This is how you get the most spawns per minute. I've done this extensively, and I know pretty much exactly how far away I need to go for these to spawn in efficiently. You may get in the situation that you accidentally despawn two at a time, and then, oh, see? If you spawn away too many while he's knocking them out, you can get those pack spawns coming back in. You want to avoid the pack spawns. That's the number one thing you want to do here. And you're just going to want to repeat this over and over. Something neat that I started testing and I wasn't able to test it properly is co-op. If you do this in co-op, you only spawn in five Pokemon at a time. I spawn in five and then my second player just got one. <laughs> and my second player will spawn in five at a time. Now, since a pack spawn requires three spaces, all you have to do is make sure that you have, oh, he has morning sun. Okay, you're going to sleep first, guy. We got the crit and GG. If you wanted to do this in co-op, there's only going to be five spaces that you can spawn in for you. So all you have to do is this same method, but it's gonna be even more efficient because you only need to despawn two of your pack spawns. Now, simple math will tell you that 10 is going to be a lot less than 15. What I'm theorizing is that if you had four Scarlet players doing this at the same time, 
You're then going to be having a total of 20 Pokemon spawning on your screen at a time, and it's going to be much more efficient. In addition, you're going to be having four Let's Go Mons constantly despawning them from all four players' pools. So while I'm doing one corner, someone else may do a second corner, and then you just kind of all rotate. While this does, in theory, work anywhere in the game, it works a lot better in Area Zero, just because of how condensed all of the spawners are. And this doesn't only work with Paradox Pokemon. If there's a specific Pokemon that you want to hunt and you want to avoid pack spawns like this Metacham who just decided to show up because I despawned too many at once, this will work for that Pokemon as well. If you want to hunt a Venomoth or Raichu, actually this would be a great place to do Raichu because Raichu is only going to be by itself and otherwise you have to deal with all the Palmo spawning in and pack spawns. So by doing this away and slowly trimming away at them, it shouldn't be too hard. Just got my second one showing up. This works. That's what I'm trying to get across. That was also the worst angle ever and I need one for the thumbnail. Money shot. There we go. Although, you know, it's so bright out here, you can barely tell. There may be instances where you're trying to isolate one specific Pokemon away from pack spawns. This is the general concept of that. If there's any instances in Violet or in the overworld that you see this being really efficient, I'd like to know it. Leave a comment down below. And if you found this video helpful, do me a favor, hit the thumbs up button. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe, turn on notifications. Until next time, Austin Child. Man, they see me shining like I got the charm. Stay strapped, got that jet ball in my palm. Felt from the sky, guess I'm the chosen one. And if you need to know how, check out Austin John. Champion flow, flow, yeah. I got that champion flow, flow.